Hello and welcome to this video where I'm going to be talking about using ChatGPT for books or more so book summaries in the way of getting cliff notes or some of the best golden nuggets. I think one of the best ways to digest information in books is getting just some of the best information. Not only can you get the outlines and what happens in each specific section, but you can really do that in a very quick amount of time. So here's a prompt that I'm going to put down below. So I, put, I need an outline of the chapters in the book called Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. So this is the book that I'm going to be using as an example. We're starting with the outline first because what we can do is once we get some of the chapters, we can match it up and you know see if it's correct. But we can take specific aspects or chapters that we like and just get even more information. So follow along and let's click on enter and see what we get. All right, great. So obviously this isn't going to be an overall summary. We can obviously check and see if this is going to match up with the chapters. Uh, I've done this previously and I wanted to do that because it is going to be slightly different. Keep in mind, there's plenty of different editions of books. So that's something to keep in mind when it comes to that. But if we were looking to get the basics out of this or some of the most important information, now we can start using some of these outlines or chapters to get even more information. One second. Okay, so I put in the book, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind, explain a little more about the basics of money. Okay, so that can be like the fundamental aspect, something you want to know about. Let's click on enter. So in the book, uh, T. Harv Ecker explains the basics of money involves understanding the fundamental principles of wealth creation and financial literacy. This includes understanding how money works, learning the difference between assets and liabilities, and developing a healthy relationship with money. The author also highlights the importance of having a growth mindset and a willingness to learn and grow in one's financial knowledge and habits. Though these basics, through these basics, the author aims to provide a foundation for readers to develop the millionaire mind and achieve financial success. Okay, so overall, I agree with that. Let's look at something else. How about the millionaire mind actions and behaviors? So put in the book, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind, write a few paragraphs and talk about the millionaire mind actions and behaviors. Let's see what we get. All right, so we got a good amount of information here. It talks about these actions and behaviors are crucial. So saving and investing, budgeting, networking, continual learning. Uh, they're always looking to improve their financial knowledge and skills. They're open to learning from their experiences as well as from experts in the field. By adopting these actions and behaviors, the author argues that individuals can develop the millionaire mind and achieve financial success. So let me do one more thing. Let's just say we want to have some of the best aspects of this book. And this will be the last one in the book of Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. Give me some of the best golden nuggets and aha moments. Write multiple paragraphs. Let's see what we get. All right, so if we we're scrolling through, we could look at some of the biggest takeaways. Like if you're reading this book, what would you tell to someone like, you know, what did you get the most out of it? That's kind of what we're asking here. So your money blueprint, it centers on the, con it's the big concept in the book. Everyone has their own um, unique money blueprint that determines their final financial success. This is a set of unconscious beliefs, thoughts, and habits that are formed in childhood and shape an individual's relationship with money. Yes, that is correct. I do remember that. Difference between assets and liabilities, uh, the millionaire mind, and the seven-level money game. It's been a while since I've read that book, so I don't know how super accurate that is. You know, if someone has read it earlier than I have, or uh, later than I have, so to speak, you can chime in. But overall, that's just another example of how you can use ChatGPT when it comes to books and book summaries. So it's kind of like getting the cliff notes. And keep in mind that at the time, ChatGPT can only go up to, I think, 2021 is the latest year. So something that's super brand new, you know, you're probably not going to get too much help with. But if you put a book that's been out a while, probably have some information about it. And what you can do is kind of get the uh, cherry pick some of the gold nuggets, some of the best aha moments, and even talk about some of the aspects in it. As I talk about a lot of times, I don't think I've done a video about this, but usually I'm sure you've seen it before. If you've ever read any self-help or business books, the majority of the stuff is so minimal that you need to know. And then the rest of it usually is just, we'll be real here. It's fluff, you know, or stuff that accentuates their point. You can make a good point. You can talk a little bit about it. And then after all, there's just a lot of filler. The reason for that, in my opinion, is because people need to have somewhat bigger books. If you keep it really thin and short and small, then people are going to think like they didn't get enough value of it or they didn't explain it enough. But that's just my opinion. I feel like once you get the main idea from a book, I think that's the biggest thing. So it's good that you can actually snag these with using ChatGPT. Hope you got some value out of this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. My name is James. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.